Hello everyone. Something really important that I want to discuss with you today, and it really affects everybody on just about every level, you know, whether you're into economics or you basically just have a savings account or a bank account. I mean, you're noticing that the return on your money is becoming a lot less than it was before. I mean, if you had money in basically in your savings account or if you had a money market account, I mean, you're basically noticing that your money has a return anywhere from you know, under one percent to a little bit more above that, and then you're wondering, well, why is that? You know, why is return your money so little? Especially when the smart thing to do, you know, is to save money, especially in an economy, and you know, use your money to pay off your debt. Especially what's happening right now in a recession. Now, the reason is simple. The reason why the return on your money is less is because they're lowering interest rates. When you have lower interest rates on the money to borrow that money then when you save the money, the return on the money that you're going to get is going to be lower. Now, why are they lowering interest rates? They're lowering interest rates because they want to boost the economy. They figure if you have lower interest rates, money is then cheap. So then people will borrow more money to open businesses, to buy houses, to buy cars, and that's their plan. So basically, that's why they're doing it. The problem with this is, though, is that the return on your money when you have it in the bank is less. Now here's a really big problem, something huge, something more grand on a very grand scale is the trading partners with this country. Countries like China, they're also lending money and they're buying treasuries. Okay, Now they're buying treasuries, basically that means they're doing the same thing as you're doing. You know, Now the return from the money they're buying is also less. They're not happy about that. Okay. Now, something you have to understand, that's just one problem. The other problem is, is that how much longer will they continue to lend money to this country? Now, you're talking about a dollar which is losing value all the time. And the reason it's losing value is because of inflation. They print more money and print more money, lower interest rates, and there's more borrowing. The currency is inflated, so it's worthless. If you go to the store, you notice prices are high recently, and you're probably wondering, you know, we're in a recession. They should be dropping prices, right, to increase sales. Well, the reason they're higher is not because prices are going up. It's because the dollar is worth less. So that's a big problem, like I said, especially if you're saving. If you're buying things, I'm not talking about unnecessary spending. I'm talking about spending for the things that you really need. Now, <laughs> you know, the point being is it's a huge problem because if this currency loses more and more value, it puts things in a very, very precarious situation. Now, what I'm trying to say is, is that the U.S. dollar, right, despite the problems that it's having now, is still the world's reserve currency. I don't know if you know this. Half of all exports are traded in U.S. dollars. Okay. As far as I know, all IMF loans are in U.S. dollars. You know, just about, you know, two thirds of the world's exchange reserves are in dollars. So, despite the fact that it's something that's just printed on a piece of paper. There is demand for that paper because of the fact that you have to trade with it. Loans are made with it. And that's for everybody, not just Americans. So there's demand for this paper. You're probably wondering, why is China buying this stuff? Why do they give us all this stuff in return? Treasuries, right? That they're buying bonds. That they're lending money, basically. That's what they're doing. And basically, you know, they're getting a return on it. Why are they buying this money? Because there's something they can do with it. They can use it. There's a lot of things that the dollar can be exchanged for, such as oil, a powerful thing, oil, by the way. All oil on the markets, okay, have to be bought and sold in dollars. So that gives the dollar value. There's a country out there that has to pay its oil bill. They got to get dollars. They got to exchange their currency and get dollars because they got to buy it too. Okay, it has to be sold and bought in dollars. So the dollar has a standard value to it, despite the fact that it's not standardized. Now, what I'm trying to say is, the dollar used to have a gold standard. And that means that the money was redeemable in gold. So that's a great thing because then no matter what happens, okay, with the economy, recession, instability, the dollar is interchangeable with gold. However, in 1971, the Nixon shock, they called it, and the gold standard was ended. So the, the currency from 1971 became destandardized. So now, basically, it's backed by nothing. Okay? It's basically backed by the stability, the power, and the might of the country that issues it. So this is a, a big problem. And what I'm getting at here really is, this is an important concept. 
There are some estimates that China may be the world's power. They may be the most strongest economy, they say, maybe in 10 or 20 years. So if this happens, just think about this right now. China buys this currency. Why? Because we're the world's reserve currency. Now, what if that ends? What if we have an economy that's bigger than we are? Will we still be the reserve's currency? Will we still be the reserve currency? Will the U.S. dollar still be the reserve currency? Makes you wonder, why would somebody want money from a country which is less powerful than they are economically, right? That's a scary thing to imagine. They stop buying dollars, right? Or if they want the return on the money that they have, how will this country pay them back? With what? With dollars? <laughs> they don't want the dollars anymore. It's a scary thing to, to think about. So the point is, is that things, right? Should the currency be standardized? Should this country go back to basics? Should we start producing things again? Okay? Like what this country used to do. I mean, look at Detroit. Look at the Motor City. I mean, they call it the Motor City. They were making cars. It was a huge industry. I mean, there was a time when our automakers were the biggest in the world. Now you go to Detroit, it's like a graveyard. You know, a, a real economic prosperity is based on what a country can produce. You know, they look at GDP. What about GNP? What about gross national product? This country has to produce things, and it does. You know, such as agribusiness and aerospace. And there's a lot of things it does, but it has to go to that trend. It has to produce things. That's an economy. That is a gauge on true economic prosperity. All right, like they do in Asia. They make things. I mean, in this country, the way they gauge things is spending. It's just incredibly goofy. And look at Black Friday. You know, Black Friday, basically a bunch of mindless goofs. I mean, most of them, mindless goofs, you know, going around, taking things off the store shelves. And how are they paying for it? A lot of them with credit cards that are maxed out, where they should be paying off their debts, you know, their car loans, their houses, which they're probably losing. These people might not even have jobs. And that's the way they gauge economic prosperity in this country. You know, things have to change. We have to change the way we look at things, the way we do things, standardize our currency, make our currency worth something, create real jobs, you know, go back to a labor economy, possibly. Think about that. Well, we can make things. We can offer things to other countries. You know, well, what's the service economy? It's, it's baloney. I mean, something has got to be done. Something has got to be done.